Look at that, yeah, yeah. See, there we go. Have you ever heard of the double slit experiment? I remember we learned about this in like, I don't know, like grade five or grade six or something, right? And you know, at the time I was, you know, stupid, I was little and I didn't quite understand like the severity. I'm like, okay, yeah, you look at it and it like changes, so what? This experiment basically stated that like, okay, yeah, when you look at something, when you observe something, its state changes. Meaning that when there's zero observers, it shifts to a different state than it is when someone is observing it. This is called quantum mechanics and this is very confusing stuff, right? Now, here's the thing, I don't know much about about quantum mechanics right i don't know if every single like you know quantum mechanic is about perception but something that i really started to wonder is could i implement quantum like mechanics in roblox in like some sort of video game because i've been playing this game called outer wilds and without spoiling there's this planet basically which is called the quantum moon right and basically like if you look away from it for even just a split second just even one frame and then you look back it's gone, right? So it only exists when you actually like look at it. And so that gave me a really interesting idea. What if we tried to recreate this, you know, moon or planet or whatever it was, but inside of Roblox? How could that work, right? So if I call this moon, for example, and I just set the color of this like to be, you know, very grayish and everything. And so something that I think would be really interesting is what if we make it so that this moon is only visible when the player is not looking at it, okay? So whenever the camera is, you know, like facing away from the moon or, you know, it's like being blocked by something, that's when the moon is is actually visible but then when the player actually looks at it then it's not visible and so this is a really interesting thing that i wanted to try out for a while now when i first started thinking of the concept i kind of realized like okay we probably need to use a local script inside of starter player scripts right? because here's the thing if we're going based off the player's camera that's local right so the camera is local meaning we have to use a local script and i began playing around with like okay how can we actually detect if a player is seeing something and that's when i found out that the uh, workspace.current camera apparently has a function called world to screen green point and then it needs a position right so i can just say moon is equal to workspace wait for child moon and then we can just give it the moon dot position and then from my understanding right i've never really like used this function but from what i understand it returns two values okay not one it returns two and so i'm pretty sure the first value um i don't remember exactly what it was but i don't think like it's something that we need so i'll just call it uh, underscore but then the second value is going to be a true or false value depending on whether the camera is actually seeing this moon so i can just call this something like on screen okay so we're gonna make these two variables right this is an underscore because like i said i'm not gonna use this right so basically we're just gonna be using one variable called on screen which will return true if the camera is actually seeing the moon and false if the camera is actually not seeing the moon and we can put this inside of a loop and actually find this out so i can say game run service and bro so many people made fun of me for writing it like this because usually you do like get service and then you say run service but i don't know i just i like doing it like this you say render step connect function right so basically whenever the game update what i want to do is i want to basically you know create this so i'm gonna just copy it here and then we're gonna say if on screen meaning if on screen is true then we're gonna take the moon and set its transparency to be one okay meaning it's gonna be invisible else we're gonna do the same thing except the transparency now will be zero meaning it's visible so if it's on screen if we can see it it's going to be invisible else it's going to be visible and so let's see if i play the game right now oh interesting look at that okay so a slight problem here is that it seems to only be like basing it off of the middle of the moon right so for example like i can actually see the corner of the moon so it lets me do that it's just the moment that i actually start to look at the very middle of the moon that's when it operates so something that i think we actually should do is instead of just checking for the moon position we should probably subtract a few vectors from it i know this probably isn't making too much sense but like how tall is the moon right what's the size of the moon 18. So what I want to do, right, because right now all the camera is doing is it's checking whether the center of the moon is visible to it, right? So if the center of the moon is not visible, then it's going to set the transparency to zero, meaning we can see the moon, right? But then if we can still see the moon, right? And even if we don't see the center, we can still see like the bottom of the moon and everything. So what I want to do is I want to ensure that even if we're seeing the bottom of the moon, it turns invisible. And the way I can do that is by getting the middle of the moon and then just subtracting it and moving it down nine studs, for example, right? So nine, zero. So it's going to subtract nine vertical studs, meaning it's going to basically move this position down nine studs. And hopefully that's going to work because I'm not actually too sure. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, okay, so it does seem to be somewhat working. Now, something to note as well is that this is only for my player. Because we're changing this on a local script, right? Um, on a server, we can still see it. 
right? So like, for example, yeah, if I were to stare at the moon, uh, which, you know, right now it's invisible technically, but it's visible on the server because we're doing the changes locally and not via a server. So I'm, ju I'm just saying this because, you know, if you're following along and if you want to add this into your own game, just keep it in mind that you want to be doing this on a server script and not a local script. But that is interesting though, right? And I'm thinking right now, a way to actually ensure that the moon always remains like, you know, invisible when it needs to, because right now, you know, it's like it still shows up sometimes when it's not supposed to. So something that I think would be cool is if you were to make a bunch of these variables, but all of them would be like on different points of the moon, right? And then you check, okay, if all of them are on screen, then you set the moon to invisible, right? Else you set the moon to be visible. But that's an easy fix, right? And so right now, I don't really want to prioritize that. What I want to prioritize now is how can we make it so that a part can actually block our view of the moon, right? Because here's the thing. I know right now you might be thinking like, oh, but isn't it already blocking the view of the moon? But here's the thing. It's not. And the way that I can prove it isn't, right, is you know, I'm going to play the game right now, right? And um, where's the moon? <laughs> Do we see the moon? Oh, okay. Yeah, see, we, we can see the shadow. Oh, that's okay. So we can see the shadow of the moon. Okay. Now look at this, right? Look at that. The moon is gone. Look at that, right? So even though I'm technically hiding in here, right? And then we, we can see that the moon is actually right there, right? So I can, you know, kind of do this. The moment we go up, my camera should not be seeing the moon right now, okay? It should not be seeing the moon, and yet it activates, okay? And the reason it does that is because apparently this function doesn't detect for any like parts in between. And so this is where we actually need to use another function. This is kind of confusing and I'm sure there's like better methods of doing this, but I just found the fact that you can even do this very interesting. Like obviously I know that, you know, this isn't really like advanced scripting, like, oh yeah, camera can detect whenever it's looking at something, obviously. But I just wanted to share it with you because, you know, maybe you're a beginner scripter or maybe you're someone who doesn't even script, but is just interested in scripting in general, which actually I'll just quickly say, um, I just made a half off coupon for my course. So I literally just made a coupon where like, if you go and buy my course, you can put it the coupon so yeah so if you want to you know go check out the course preview it all that stuff the link is in the description but okay back to scripting right right now what we need to understand is we need to figure out a way to actually get all of the parts that are obscuring our camera from viewing this position right now here's the thing we could do a raycast but apparently the camera has another built-in function which i think is just like also a raycast but it's just in the form of a function called workspace you know current camera get parts obstructing target so this is cool because first it needs the actual camera position so we can see you know workspace current camera c frame position and then the other thing that it needs is actually this moon's position right so i can just copy this line do a comma and then put this over here but then it needs another table and that table is going to be full of the things that we actually want it to ignore because what this function does is it basically returns a table of every single item that's you know obstructing the view right but the thing is there are some things that we want to ignore like for example my character right i don't want you know my character to be obstructing the view of the moon and you know the moon itself so what i think we should do is we need to make a table called local ignore table like so and then make it equal to an empty table and so i just made a quick variable for the character right and so once we have the character what we're gonna do is i'm gonna loop through the character so for iv in car uh get descendants right do and we'll just say if v is a base part right or uh v is a accessory right so if it's a base part or accessory then we're gonna say table insert and then it's gonna ask for the table which is our ignore table and then the value to put inside of the table which is going to be v right and then end. So basically, we're going to put every single part and accessory that's inside of our character inside of this ignore table. And the very last thing we should put inside the ignore table as well is the actual moon itself, right? Because we don't want the moon to count as a part obscuring the moon. You know what I mean? Like, that's not something we want. So I'll just say moon like so. And then, yeah, when it asks for the ignore list, we can just give it our ignore table. And so I can just call this local obstruct uh, list. And we need to check if uh, the number of items inside of this list, right, which we can check by putting a hashtag in front of it. If the number of items in this list is equal to zero, meaning nothing is obstructing it, that's when we set the moon's uh, transparency equal to invisible, right? Else, we're gonna set the moon's transparency equal to be visible. So if I turn around right now, interesting. Look at that. Oh, wait, okay, I, I just understand what I did wrong completely, okay? So here's the thing, we're checking, okay, if obstruct list is equal to zero, right? Meaning if there's no item obstructing us from looking at the moon, then the moon will be invisible. But the issue is, I forgot to do an else statement. So what I'm doing is like, regardless of whether we do this or not, I set the moon's transparency to be zero anyway, right? So we, this needs to be inside of the else statement. Hopefully that should work. Let's see. There we go. And now, and now let's check this out, okay? Look at that, yeah, yeah. 
See, there we go. So now it's actually treating this part as an obstruction because it is, right? Now, obviously, you know, that means we can still see the moon and everything, but like, because like I said, what it would do before is basically treat this part as if it was fully invisible, right? And actually, I'm curious, what if we, I just start like changing the transparency of this part? What's going to happen? Yeah, so it still treats this part as a blocker so we can actually see the moon in all of its glory yeah like this is so cool there's so much like you know cool like uh mechanics to be like made with it because i don't know bro so many like you know modern roblox games just feel so boring like they're fun sure i guess but i mean like you know they're, they're not fun in the sense of like they're like you know innovating with something new right like for example again i got this idea from the game outer wilds which is really fun and has a lot of these like you know fun little gimmicks but it's like okay roblox we have like blocks fruits and then blade ball wow good job guys innovation so yeah honestly you know i i expect this video to um <laughs> revive good roblox games right and if you agree with me that we actually need more like better games then do subscribe i know this sounds like a shameless plug but i'm just saying like if you subscribe my videos will reach a higher audience which means more people will see this blah 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 meaning no more blocks fruits and blade ball and more of this i mean this is literally the best game you've ever seen on roblox likely so yeah do subscribe and i guess you know leave a like while you're at it but yeah this was actually really fun to make and i am really glad that uh, i've actually managed to figure out a solution to a problem mid video because like i said right the issue with you know doing it this way is that it's only pointing to one little point right which is why sometimes we were able to see the moon when we're not supposed to because the whole point of this moon is that we're not supposed to actually see it ever that's the whole point but the reason we saw it sometimes is because my camera is only checking if it has direct line of sight to this bottom point but if it's seeing the top point or the middle point or, you know, this point or this point or, you know, this point or whatever, right? Basically, if it's seeing any part of the moon that isn't the bottom, then it's going to think that, oh, yeah, we're not seeing the moon because it's only checking for if we actually see the bottom. If we're not seeing the bottom, then it doesn't care. And so that's what I meant when I said, OK, we need to make all like a bunch more of these variables and then just check if one of them is being seen. So instead of just having one point here, we need another another variable, you know, checking for this point and then another variable checking for the top and then one for the right side, one for the left side, one for the front, one for the back, you, you know, like so on and so on. And yes, yeah, so, you know, to keep this video short, I'm not going to like, you know, do all of this stuff right now. But if you were inspired, I do definitely recommend that, you know, you start Start your own game you know you you know use inspiration from what i coded here and then just try making a game where you know this idea of like you know quantum mechanics or physics or i don't know whatever it's called actually acts as like a main gameplay element so for example maybe there's like some section where you have to jump across like this big gap but then the parts uh, that you actually need to jump on only become visible when you aren't looking at them, right? So that actually would be pretty fun. Like an obby where you cannot look at the obby to complete it, you know? I don't know, I'm just rambling at this point, right? So yeah, like I said, uh, you know, this was pretty fun to make. So join the Discord server, you know, check out my course and use the promo code, like I said before. And yeah, so as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.